Welcome to Family Gamer TV. I'm with Jeff Bunker, Creative dire Director for Disney Infinity, is that right? That is correct. And so what does that role involve? That, enrolls, uh, that role involves uh, coming up with the look of the game itself and the look of the toys also. Mm -hmm. So I mean, on a normal video game, I imagine that would be quite a task, but on a, a game that involves so many different franchises, you've got lots of interesting parties. Yeah, <laughs> I imagine you're yeah. quite possessive over how their things look. Exactly. How, how does that go? You know, it's been crazy. I've, uh, I've made video games for about 20 years now. And all those years I've made virtual goods, something that just exists, mm -hmm. you know, on the, on the box. Yeah. And to have something physical to hold, and then to have something that uh, is, you know, we're, we're dealing with the most popular characters in the world. And to be able to work with the creators of those characters and come up with a style and, mm -hmm. and a, a look for their characters that they're happy with and that we know the fans are going to love, it's, it's been really fun. Mm -hmm. A lot of excitement. So it sounds like there's quite a lot of competing um, interests there. So, I mean, say like Mr. Incredible here. Very right. So, um, what would the process be of going from, obviously you have the, the concept of who he is, but how do you get from there to, to this right. character here? You know, we started out with Toy Story 3, the video game, and the, there's a toy box oh, yeah. level in there. Yeah. And when we uh, put that out there, we, we recognized that we had something kind of special there. Mm -hmm. And we wanted to build off that. And so we were working with John Lasseter on a, a sequel to that. And we were just making it Star Command. And it was just, it was a buzz type level. And as we were getting further and further down that process, we said, you know, maybe this could be something we could include other characters in if we just made them toys too. Mm -hmm. And so we took that idea to John. And he says, well, he says, you know, that's kind of exciting, but I'd have to get my head around that. It seems like you'd have to come up with a style that would incorporate all the different characters from Disney Channel or, or feature animation, live action, all those type of things that would bring it all together. And, and, said, new, and new acquisitions like LucasArts and Marvel. Yeah, yeah, exactly. It could include anything that Disney has. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and he says, but you know, that's, that's a real challenge. That would, uh, you know, his, his exact words, are, he, he said that style would have to be wicked awesome. <laughs> and so yeah. I, we, uh, I went around to all the different uh, production designers and art directors of the different studios and, and uh, worked with John on trying to get, it just kind of spiraled down till we finally ended up with these. Mm -hmm. On Infinity, we're working with Imagineers and with Johnny Depp and and Jerry Bruckheimer yeah. and John Lasseter and uh, I mean you just just go on and on on the different creative people that we've been dealing with on Infinity. Mm -hmm. It's been a, a lot. It's been a blast. Yeah. yeah, yeah, it sounds great. And so in terms of the toy itself, um, obviously it's it's sort of hitting a, a sort of certain type of quality and the number of paint passes. Yes. Is that something that you're responsible for in terms of refining the physical toy? Did you have to learn how to? get toys ordered from Chinese factories and things like you know, that? that? That's what's, uh, as we start getting happy with what we're seeing in the computer, we says, well, it's one thing to see it there, it's a whole nother thing yeah. to hold it. Yeah. And so we do a 3D print of it, and generally we do a whole nother round of iterations once we've done that, because we see things that uh, may have made sense just in, on, the, on the monitor that's not making sense mm -hmm. while, while we're holding it. And after the 3D prints, then we send that to the, um, the factories and they have to do a whole nother step of uh, preparing it for manufacturing where they have to break it up into parts and decide, engineer it, how it's going to come back together and how the paint hits are going to be applied. And uh, it's, it's an amazing process. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it sounds great. So we've got a few of them in front of us. Yeah. Do you have some particular stories about any of these characters, how they came to be like they are or a particular favorite there? You know, my, my favorite, I would have to say my favorite is probably uh, Davy Jones. Yeah, he's nice, isn't he? I think he's uh, he's got a good heft to him, and he, he's it's quality. The, the crab claw, it's yeah, great. the crab claw. I just, I, he's aesthetically, he's one of my favorites. Mm -hmm. uh, a cool story about Jack Sparrow is he was especially difficult, or ch I shouldn't say difficult. He was challenging to make because we had to not only make. Uh, Jer Jerry Bruckheimer and uh, Gore Verbinski happy, but we also had to make uh, Johnny Depp happy. Yeah, you know, so it's, all, to, it's sort of him, isn't it? So, exactly. Yeah. And so we had to Johnny we had Depp to toy. constantly be going back to him with what the the toy was looking like and and the pose and all those things, and they're very particular. I mean, it's like uh, Jack Sparrow in particular. His uh, the rings that he has 
have to be a specific color to that and they were it was it was so funny how they you know oh that that thumb ring has got to have the the green on it and that ring ring finger has got to have the purple on it and it just mm-hmm. it, so did he it, get sent the toys to have a look at oh absolutely yeah, yeah we had to uh, and, and along the process, we would send them a 3D print, just where it would be a grayscale version of the character, and mm-hmm. they'd be able to see just the geometry side of it. Yeah. And then we'd send them a paint master, which is just a, a 3D print that's painted up the way it's going to be. And then we ended up having to send the actual toy to them after yeah. that, and so they, they're part of that whole process. Mm-hmm. So it sounds like the whole, the ch- well, b- big challenge of this is the fact you're working with Disney properties. Was there ever a stage where you sort of thought maybe it would be better just to come up with some original characters rather than working with these existing sort of well-known brands? You know, we just had to embrace the fact that it, it was going to be challenging, but we just know that there are so many fans of each one of these characters that if we were to come up with our own character, it just wouldn't have that same type mm. of yeah. appeal to the Disney fan. And so uh, it, those thoughts crossed our minds, but it, uh, and, and even in the, as far as, you know, sometimes we thought, well, it'd be a lot easier uh, if our, some of our enemies, we just made them our infinity characters, or, you know. Mm-hmm. That, so generic enemy. Gener- yeah. Yeah, yeah, generic. But even there, we actually made some of those, but later on we replaced those with characters from the vault, uh, you know, so, you know, just other characters from from uh, Disney past because we knew that the fans would would appreciate yeah, that. Yeah, a big and fan service. Seeing seeing an old character that maybe you liked as a exactly. child suddenly appearing as a physical toy is great. And, and and that ended up making a big difference. The toy box started feeling more and more Disney as we got rid of Infinity Toys and made them mm-hmm. more characters based off of what the Disney fans love. Yeah. And was there a moment in the Disney Infinity sort of concept? where it changed from being a, a digital game with a toy box to being a, uh, this game that has physical figures. So who, who sparked that idea? Where did that come from? You know, that it actually was part of the, uh, the discussion from the very beginning. Mm-hmm. Uh, John Lasseter, I don't know if you're, you're aware, but he's a huge toy collector. He's a, a huge toy fan. Yeah. And so the moment we pitched this idea to him, he just said, you know, from the outset, these need to be a style, an aesthetic, something that... Uh, people will want to put on their shelves and so from the very from the very beginning we had the idea that these could be toys and uh, there was there was a lot of discussions through well for the through the years of talking with uh, consumer products and because they're the experts at making uh, making uh, toys and and uh, trying to figure out how to incorporate them into the gameplay and how the how to put that together and package that together as a toy versus, uh, or not versus, but a toy cooperatively with a game. So it it was uh, it was there. Where it was part of the nugget of that idea. Great. Well, okay. thanks for your time. Really appreciate that. It's great to hear sort of the background to Disney yeah. Infinity and how these toys come about. I appreciate you, uh, you taking the time. Great. Thank you. <laughs>